So I'm Paul Bailey, serial supercar collector, and today we're talking about the Koenigsegg CCR in our continuing introduction to the analog supercars that we have available today. The Koenigsegg CCR is a very rare car, only a handful of these cars have been made. And where are they made? Well, they're made in Sweden by Christian von Koenigsegg. Uh, they are handmade, including all of the carbon work in his own autoclave his own engine design and his own gearbox design. So it is a very rare and hand-built car that you can enjoy. Except, can you really enjoy a CCR? Well, today it's a handful, very greasy road, and I think it would be hard to describe it as an enjoyable drive. It's a challenging drive. The car has 806 horsepower. It puts the power down on the rear wheels only, which are big, fat tires that will grip you on a dry road, but will slide the back end in most instances on the greasier roads that we've been out on today. So what's the car like to drive? Well, it's a six speed manual, H pattern. Uh, it's uh, a very guttural engine when you hear the car running. It doesn't have the same sound as you would expect from a traditional V8. But the car itself, uh, is a true animal, a car that gives you good feedback but doesn't really allow too many mistakes. So pulling off, heavy clutch, heavy gearbox, reasonably light steering with reasonable feedback as I've already said and as you pull away and you add the gas you'll see the revs rise and what you will feel more than anything else, more than the horsepower, is the torque of the engine. It's quite easy to run around in, in quite a high gear uh, with this car and enjoy the, the torque that is available. Uh, inside the car it's quite light and airy, it's got a glass roof on it, it's got all the things you would expect, central locking, it's got electric windows, it's got air conditioning, it's got a stereo you can't hear, even if you turn it up full blast, by the time you can hear it it's just pure distortion, so there's no point. Uh, it doesn't have any reception for radio, despite the fact that it's got a radio fitted in it. Um, so really you're listening to the car uh, and it's evil, the car is an evil sound is the best way of describing the Kamasek CCR. It's got the unique door opening facility that you see, uh, so unique that if you don't park it a foot from the curb it'll smash the door when it opens and, and it hits the side of the curb. So that's something else you have to have a bit of a think about when you're uh, using the car on a day to day basis. Uh, what's it like owning the car? Well, it, it's a pretty fantastic car to own because you're unlikely to see another one. There are very, very few Koenigseggs around in the world and even fewer CCRs. And so I guess if you were to see another one, it's unlikely to be the same colour, the same spec, and therefore it's unique. And for me, as a serial supercar collector, it was critical to have a car like a Koenigsegg within my collection. So for today's filming I ordered bright sunshine, dry roads and clear visibility. Unfortunately it was stuck in the post 
and instead we've had fog, greasy roads, rain and just about the worst driving conditions that you could imagine. So the CCR is a bit of a handful in those conditions. I guess in most instances what you have to do is to think about what you're doing before you do it because if you don't think it will chuck you in the ditch. So what does that mean in real terms? What it means is that the steering has got to be dead straight, proper, proper straight before you add on any power. That is unless you want to have the car sideways and if you want to have the car sideways, no problem. Put a bit of lock on, add a bit of gas and the car will come about your request. Whether you want it to or not, that is exactly what's going to happen. Braking, of course, you have to think about lots of rubber on the road, but when there's more grease and when there's more rain on the road than you really want, you've got to be thinking about your braking, because with a car like this, with 806 horsepower, the car will accelerate much faster than perhaps you are expecting. The Koenigsegg CCR held the world record when it was manufactured for the fastest production car in the world, and it doesn't disappoint in terms of its performance. So two or three of the really good things about owning the Koenigsegg, definitely one of them is its rarity. Uh, but in practical terms, when you're using the car, the whole of the roof comes off all in one go and fits under the front bonnet. And that target top removal gives you uh, wind in the hair of a motoring, if you've got any hair that is. Uh, and it's really fantastic, you can hear the car and you can smell the car. There's a, a definite aroma of a Koenigsegg, it's a blend of the cooling system and the engine oil and the gearbox oil and, and the rest of, of the car. Uh, what are the weaker points of the car? Well, the car's been designed with two 6 volt batteries wired in parallel and that is singularly the biggest problem with the car. It doesn't hold its charge. It's very, very difficult when you go out somewhere and you park up and perhaps you go for a meal and when you come out the car doesn't start. So unfortunately a jump pack is one of the options that you have to add to Koenigsegg ownership. Uh, the newer cars are different, they have come up with a solution but I've been trying to find a solution for this car and it is frustrating and we've tried a number of options. So I'm interested to hear if anyone's got any suggestions on how you can overcome these problems with two 6 volt batteries on a car with that amount of horsepower. So this is how you start the Koenigsegg, two buttons here, ignition and power, followed by these two buttons here to turn over the engine, plus of course the alarm, here we go. My car is flaccid. Other than that, the, the car's unbelievably well built. You know, when you build such few cars as Christian has built, then you have to say, well done, and applaud the fact that we've got cars like this on the road today that are rare, that are difficult to drive, that are fantastic to see out there being used, even in conditions like we have experienced today. So one of the final points to talk about the Koenigsegg CCR is what is the car like on the racetrack? As you guys are aware, I like to track my cars and the CCR is no different to anything else in my collection. Once the tyres have warmed up and they're big and they're fat and they take a bit of time to warm up, once the fluids have warmed up and once the brakes are warmed up, you'll be very, very impressed with how the CCR accommodates itself on the track. It's very good at turning, not too much understeer, not too much oversteer. Power delivery has to be smooth, exactly as you would expect, but with the torque of the engine, the car performs very well and you don't end up rowing the gearbox and changing gear every two seconds like you would with some cars. Uh, I think it's uh, therefore a strong car on the track and I guess at some stage in the future Christian may even think about making a racing Koenigsegg. Hi, I'm Adrian Holmes, a member of Supercar Driver Club and today we've been out in the Ford GT Mirage 720. So the Ford GTs uh, were the updated uh, of the original GT40s, built between 2004 and 5 in the States, of which uh, 101 came to Europe and 28 stayed in the UK. Uh, Avro and Rouge Technologies, who were the importers, and getting the cars ready for Europe and UK to make them road legal. Uh, then decided they were going to build another 10 special cars. Those were what's called the RE600. 600 brake horsepower, which was slightly more than the originals. They sold very well and got good uh, reviews. They then decided to build another 10 after they'd looked at the engine. 
and they decided on what's now uh, the Mirage 720. Unfortunately for them, they could only then find three unused cars in the States. So they were imported, so the car that you see behind me is just one of three. They were called Mirage 720, they thought they'd get 720 brake out of the engine. In fact, they run at about 746 brake horsepower with 635 pound a foot of torque as well, which is a lot of number uh, numbers, but what I can tell you is that means a hell of a lot of power and they just go through the rear wheels. So with the exception of ABS, you're on your own. It's proper seat of your pants driving. Days like today where it's rained heavy, we've had lots of fog and mist, the roads have been very greasy. It really does turn your adrenaline brown. No word of a lie. So we've had some moments today. We've had thankfully some fun, fun moments and the car's still in one piece. And I'm still in one piece. And I'm still in one piece. one piece as well. So they're, they're smiling behind the camera as we speak. So a little bit more about the car. We've talked about the massive brake horsepower, the massive torque. We've talked about no driver aids, which basically means on days like today, in fact, even on dry days, the rear wheels spin. They spin for fun in nearly any gear. So you have to be really careful. A little bit more about the car. It's got a huge Whipple supercharger. You can see the big belt behind the screen, right behind your right ear, which whizzes round. The engine makes a lot of noise, the exhaust makes a lot of noise. It's actually got a stereo, but I don't even know why they fitted one. It's absolutely useless, even though there's a big subwoofer right next to your shoulder. The car, as you can see, is left-hand drive, and it literally is as wide as a bus. So, where I live on the country lanes and where we've been driving today, it really is touch and go and literally stop at some points where the roads just aren't wide enough for two cars uh, to get through, which can be qu quite problematic. The A pillar, which is uh, obviously in the left hand drive to your left, is huge. It's about six inches off your head and it's about six inches wide. So visibility is not that great. Visibility through the through the rear, you've basically got a little letterbox to look through to the rear. And as I've said before, it's seriously wide. You can't quite tell where the back of the car is. So visibility is really poor as well. But what I can tell you is, if you're on form, the car will be on form with you. It puts a massive, massive grin on your face. When the wheels light up, as long as you're in control, absolutely fabulous. There's been moments on previous days, thankfully on circuits, where if you don't catch the car quick enough when the back end steps out, the back end quickly overtakes the front. And again, they are brown trouser moments, as my passengers can testify, uh, and I can testify when I gave my son a drive and we ended up doing donuts, which he thought was absolutely hysterical. Me, not so. Adam, as you know, runs a fantastic club, been fortunate enough to uh, go to Bugatti. Uh, the Ford GT has been to Carfest North this year, which was great fun. And we've done some events at Bruntingthorpe. The car, it says in the book, does, has got a top speed of 221 miles an hour. At Bruntingthorpe, which is a long runway in Leicestershire, the best I've had out is 206 miles an hour, so you think that's some way short of the book. Unfortunately, the runway is not long enough to get the car into sixth gear. So 206 GPS registered, literally still in fifth gear, and we've not been managed to get it into sixth. That sort of speed with an analog car and braking that's definitely not supercar braking, that's again, that's a brown trouser moment. So bicycle clips come in really handy with this car. Parking, parking's obviously not great in the car. If you notice as the door opens, part of the roof is attached to the door. So the door needs to open extremely wide for you to get out of it. 
if there ain't much room you can probably see from one of the video shots earlier where you literally can climb and crawl out of the car it, it's fun so overall it's been a fabulous day we've been out with the Koenigsegg and the Ford GT both analog supercars very evenly matched both quite scary when they need to be and they're both a pleasure to drive when they want to be this is the second part in a four part series of analog supercars on the SCD channel uh, we look forward to welcoming you again soon